Hello guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we do a Mario Kart creepypasta called Mario Kart 64, Driven. This creepypasta begins with the player telling us about their childhood, growing up through the 90s and playing N64 and Super Nintendo with his brother as kids. The player however was more into his brother's N64 and the collection of games for it. One of those games, Mario Kart 64, became the, player, became the player's favorite game. In later years, zombies and multiplayer shooters took up most of the player's gaming, but no matter what, Mario Kart 64 still held the top spot for the player's favorite game. But after what had happened, the player simply refused to touch an N64 anymore. See, a few months ago, the player sold his N64 in SNES at a yard sale. It appeared as if the player was content with the discovery of emulators and playing uh, games you know, at a near unlimited quantity of them. The family that bought the systems left a distinct memory in the player's head, however. The family consisted of a woman with two young children. There was a language barrier, but between the two it didn't hinder any sales, and the woman walked off with the consoles and 20 games and the player obtained $40. The player's brother was frustrated with the sale of the system, and so the player and his brother decided to go to the local used game shop called Game Giant. Apparently, the woman who purchased the N64 sold it to the shop, and the player bought it back for $50. The player didn't have any money left over for some games, and when the store owner was notified, they gave a free copy of Mario Kart 64 away. The owner waited for everyone to leave and was shaking upon handing the game over, assuring the player that if a refund was needed, it would be given. Despite the player's belief in ghosts, he was reluctant to believe in haunted video games, and shrugged it off. Arriving home at 4pm, the player and his brother started to play Versus for about two hours until eating dinner, and then going back to play the Grand Prix races. All the cups on the game were already completed on gold. The player decided it wasn't worth building and, you know, playing on another person's save file, so the player went to go clear it. The lap times in the games all read 6 minutes and 66 seconds, so to the player it was both creepy and illogical. Once the data was cleared, the game shut off by itself, only static was heard and seen for about 5 minutes. Then a cryptic voice of Mario was heard. The phrase was, you have driven us, and now you must watch us suffer. This shook the brother and the player, but the next day, the player would play again, with the player watching. The game turned on and everything was normal. The Star Cup was selected and the first race began, all characters looking normal. But some things were blatantly wrong. For example, the borders on the side of the tracks didn't display Wario Stadium. Instead, it read, you will pay. The race began and Lakitu had a menacing face. The sign said die instead of go. And someone, and every time someone, drove over a banana. There wasn't any cheerful noises, no no. Just a cart spinning out of control and black smoke began fuming out of the engine, and the characters screamed for help. The brother's character, Luigi, hurled a red shell and hit Yoshi. Yoshi's cart blew up into pieces. The dinosaur was blown up, crawling whatever was left of him and begging for this to end. The brother was perturbed but pushed on to f uh, finish the race. The player passed the finish line and a distorted version of the victory theme played with several explosion noises and demonic laughing. As Luigi crossed the line, every other card whose engine was smoking had blown up. Pieces of 64-bit parts were littered on the course and in front of the racer's name it said, Rest in Peace, RIP. Once it was all finished, it shut off. The TV stayed on even as the brother flicked the switch. Mario appeared on the screen and his cart was a mess. Bones protruding out from the arms and legs and patches of flesh were missing, revealing the muscles underneath. He laid on the ground, twitching, eyes bloodshot and blood and bruises everywhere. Softly, weeping. Mario gave a warning. You never should have cleared that data. His record has died. Now we will die too. You have driven him to this, so you must watch us suffer. Then upbeat text appeared stating, You have driven us. You have driven him. The brother refused to play the game any longer. The player decided to play instead and the brother went to go get a video camera to record the game. The title screen showed the characters going down a hill, Donkey Kong was splitting Luigi's head in half with a buzzsaw, Peach, Yoshi, and Mario all drove away in fear. The sky was cloudy, flames everywhere, and the music replaced with sounds of sobbing coming from Mario. The game loaded up player selection immediately. The good characters such as Mario and Toad all looked scared and some shook their heads while all the bad characters such as Bowser had a look of pure greed and evil. The, the player went to go select Toad, his favorite character. The race started on, on an off looking version of Bowser's castle. Music was lower pitched and more ominous. Peach was missing and Lakitu appeared more nefarious. The race began 
and all the cars sped past the bridge, and a statue of a demon stood in, in place where Bowser would be. Bowser, Wario, and Donkey Kong all took place next to the statue. A conversation could be heard. There was a satanic figure speaking in a language not spoken by mere mortals, but these three racers appeared to understand the language. Suddenly, a shot of flame killed Luigi, and the three villains were laughing. Luigi was charred, and all these three did was laugh. The demon repeated a cryptic and reoccurring message, You have driven us. Peach was locked up in the womp cage, her eyes missing, and her crying coagulated blood. She choked out a message, You have driven them. A final thump and pieces of her body flew everywhere, the Womp laughing in the same sick tone as the villains. At this point, Mario and the player's character Toad were alive. The player asked his brother if this was caught on camera, and the brother caught this event on camera. The player managed to dodge the flames for three laps. It wasn't about winning at this point. It was about survival now. The player didn't want to see what, what would happen if he or she died in the game. It was more about someone's life and balance now, possibly the player's. The player finished first beating Mario, the losing theme played more in a, in, in a more somber tone, and R.I.P. was written in front of their names, but this time, the name was Richard, the player's name. Now, the level was Rainbow Road, but there weren't any rainbows, only patterns of flesh and veins, as well as internal organs. Only two players were on the tracks, Mario and the player's character, Toad. The carts left tracks of blood, Mario tried performing a trick which allowed you to fly over other characters, but when Mario hit the ground, his wheels flew off and his body hit the track with a sickening crunch. His limbs were broken and he was pleading to end it. He was yelling to Toad to run me over, end my suffering, drive me. The sky was filled with the stars and the music was sped up. Neon signs depicting the characters were all showing agony, while the three villainous characters just gave menacing looks, with speech bubbles stating things like, you will burn. It was a final lap, Lakitu was laughing, and the player almost heard chuckling in his room, and so did his brother. This was it. The player's brother asked to turn the game off or he's, he would leave, but the player denied. He wanted to win, he wanted to let Toad live. Mario was still lying there, barely grasping onto life. The player didn't kill Mario, and finished the race. It said the player was in place 666. This was scaring the player, evoking a primal fear. The player hoped for this to end, but what was seen next could never be unseen. Toad spawned in front of the Mario 64 castle in Royal Raceway. All the greenery was ablaze and the waterfall was filled with blood. Macabre figures were seen in the distance. Sky was black. It looked like hell. The player, or Richard, was fearing his life at this point. The player approached the podium, and on the podium was Bowser in first, Donkey Kong in second, and Wario in third. They were laughing as the fire-breathing demon from Bowser's castle, with a greedy smirk. Behind them were the rest of the characters, with blank expressions over their faces. Eyes were missing. They couldn't see a thing, but they were staring right at Richard. One of them said, you have driven us. Suddenly, blood went everywhere, and a huge sword came down and sliced Bowser in half. The demon tore apart everyone but Toad, sparing him for some reason. Toad paced, the, Toad paced the screen and repeated a phrase in union with the demon. You have left us. You have damned us. You have driven us. The game shut off by itself. Richard tried removing the cartridge, but it burned his hand. It was steaming on the surface, but Richard and his brother soon burned it. Richard and his brother checked the video footage, but it was gone. The only thing on the camera was a single picture. It was Mario crying blood with a caption on the bottom. You have driven us. And as the cartridge melted, sounds of screams came from Richard's room. The bathroom was open, and inside the sink, there was it was filled with blood. And on the mirror was written, It will never end. You have driven us. Okay, that was Mario Kart 64 Driven. It was an alright creepypasta. As far as what I loved, I loved the detail and build-up, but plausibility was also welcome. For one, I liked how Richard and his brother, in a sense, reacted somewhat realistically to this, not wanting to play, but still in intrigued to go on. I also loved how they actually decided to document the phenomenon, and even though in the end it was suddenly gone with just a picture that really doesn't exist as far as I know, it was welcome, it was alright, it was good. The creepypasta had a lot of detail, and despite the gore, it really didn't feel that overused, and when coupled up with the images and points of suffering, it fit in. The build-up was nice, and I was glad nothing creepy began instantly as the game loaded up, but some of this build-up, in my opinion, was kind of ruined. 
For example, it was touted that Bowser, Wario, and Donkey Kong were the villains, and throughout the creepypasta it was leading up to the villain siding with this demonic figure. But ultimately in the end they're murdered alongside the other characters, like nothing. Maybe they shouldn't have sided with the demon, I guess? Hey, maybe the woman in the beginning implanted that system with the demon. Who knows? But I guess deleting the save file damned the characters and killed them off. Which was an interesting and unique concept, deleting their record so coldly, effectively killing everything accomplished by these characters and all their history. And really, that's, that's what I really liked about this creepypasta. The characters responded appropriately, although it felt somewhat off at times, it wasn't too bad. The detail was nice and the build up, although somewhat meaningless in the end, did cause some eeriness. What I didn't like about this creepypasta was the cliches. More specifically, I'll talk about two, the no eyes and the blood. There were a lot of them, and to be honest, they came way too many times for their own good. I don't really have a problem with blood and lack of organs, but they have to be used carefully in my opinion. Too much just kills the experience, at least to me. I even wonder why Richard simply didn't go get his money back for the game in the end, but hey, at least he saved someone else from suffering the same stuff he had to deal with. But all in all, I thought it was a nice creepypasta. It had flaws, but it, but it made up for it in, a, in, in detail and genuine eeriness at times. What would you rate this creepypasta and what would you change to make it better? This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I'm out.